We are in the European galleries of the Portland Art Museum. I'm Christina Olson. And I'm Mary Beth Grayville. And we're standing in front of this incredible object by a follower of Bernardo Dadi. And what we see is a Madonna, the mother of Christ, surrounded by this group of saints and angels. And this is not just a painting, it's really an object. What really draws me to this piece of the many, many Madonna and Christ as an infant paintings in this room um, is what you've just pointed out, that it is not a flat surface, it, um, it's not a, an easel painting, but the whole thing is in fact a miniature church. Yes. Um, and so that there's the panel, the back panel, which has a steeple above it, and then there are doors, there's an entryway, uh, and these doors can be closed, um, and when they're closed, as we walk around the side, you can see it's just plain gilt, perhaps gilt leather or gilt wood on the outside. But then when you enter the space, when you open yes. the doors, suddenly you're in the presence of the Madonna. Absolutely. I love that, too. And I love this way in which you realize that the object was both, of course, a representation, but also something that you, the viewer, and the and the devotee have a relationship with, and the doors open, and you're in the presence of the Madonna, and this scene is revealed to you. And let's talk about this scene, because it's really, really not just an image of the Madonna, but also the story of her life. Right. We see the angel Gabriel um, on the top uh, left um, door, and the angel Gabriel comes down from heaven and tells Mary that she will be the mother of, of Christ, that she will right. bear a son. The Annunciation scene. And what's so wonderful in these two is the sensitivity of this artist's gestures. So Gabriel raises his right hand to make an announcement. Absolutely. Mary, you know, and, and she, as you pointed out earlier, um, places her hand over her heart and inclines her head in this beautifully yes, modest me. Yes. Me. Right, um, right. It's, it's just, it's, uh, if you just we can imagine we can almost hear the conversation between them because it's so dramatically, if you will, enacted for us. Right, right, absolutely. And then below the angel Gabriel, we see, in fact, um, the nativity scene when Christ is born in the manger. In the manger, with a cow and a donkey. Absolutely, and angels and above with angels halos. And Joseph below, interacting, I think, with a shepherd. Right. And then over here on the right-hand side um, is the crucifixion Christ. Um, on the cross, um, emaciated, his skin even takes on a sort of deathly pallor, blood is coming bursting out wounds. of his wound, and, and at his feet, standing on the ground, his mother Mary is swooning, and accompanied by, um, by John, John and other followers of right. Jesus. And, and John again, holds her up in this incredible, yes, she's, she's just she's mourning, her son has died. And I love the way in which then the object has both an immediate time and also a narrative time. In other words, we come upon it and there the Virgin is, but what we see to the left and right is both what has happened before and what will happen to come. So this is just this unbelievable sense of presence and kind of multiple senses of time in the object. And it just occurs to me as you say that, that if we think about it, the panels have narrative things, you know, things that happened. Um, things that are recorded in the Bible, but the central panel of Mary enthroned, that's not in the biblical text, but also because that's presented hieratically. Yes. Forward, that's eternal. That's eternal. And that, and that is the relationship with us. Yeah. I mean, it's really yeah. the central panel that see. is always alive and always, and always speaking yeah. to us as both an image, but also an alive, efficacious deity.